if you don't have a, a functioning US CMBS market, I mean, the ramification, I think, for the whole, as you said, commercial real estate industry, especially the US, can actually become quite dramatic. And uh, we, we, we know that uh, since the financial crisis, to be honest, the banks have been much, much more you know, disciplined in underwriting their loans, their commercial real estate loans. And uh, so there is much less leverage from bank side you know, when, they, when they, you finance a commercial real estate asset. But as I said, if you don't have that part of the market, which is in the US is really, really relevant, restarting, I think it's inevit- inevitable, you know, sooner or later, you will start to, sell, to, to feel the pain as well in the banking sector. I don't know if, you know, as I said, the, the less leverage that there is at the moment uh, uh, in the market from, from bank side, how long can sustain that pressure, that downward pressure that we see um, in, in, you know, in the commercial real estate sector? Uh, okay. Also, we, we need to keep in mind that uh, interest rates now are really high uh, and also margin from banks are really high when instead, you know, during the financial crisis, okay. it was liquidity. Well, well, let me come in on that because um, just to invert this for a moment, um, if you are a sound landlord right now and you are thinking about raising money, would you actually hold off in anticipation that actually rates... Uh, policy rates are going to fall in the near term here. So again, is that um, is that adding to the malaise for this sector that a lot of a lot of interested parties seem to think there may be a cliff edge on interest rates if the economy starts to weaken? Yeah, I think if you are a landlord and you have that chance to have someone that you know a bank or even on a CMBS side, you, you you can achieve agreement with you know with your servicer to extend your maturity, I think that probably will be the best strategy uh, out there and expecting for a, you know, for a decline of uh, rates in hopefully uh, the next one or two years. And also you will need as well for some asset class waiting for a more sustained recovery because we also need to differentiate among different asset types. Uh, some of them, you know, we know uh, they are at the moment going a significant turmoil. Retail has been struggling for years. First, the e-commerce, now inflation. And now there is also office that is going through some cyclical trend change that are significantly impacting this, uh, this asset type. And uh, at the moment, if you have a secondary office building in a, in a secondary location, there is pretty much no future really for, for this kind of asset. So that's on the negative side. But then there are also asset types that instead that are holding quite well. And uh, you mentioned before, you know, the, the German residential market. And uh, we, we, we can see that at the moment, for example, on that asset type, that there is still no particular pressure because demand on occupancy levels are pretty high. People are struggling to get the mortgage now because mortgage rates are, are high. So they, they are forced to rent. And uh, so we are seeing strong demand on the tenant side and also, you know, subsequently increase on the rental side. And I would say the logistic is also at the moment still holding pretty well. Again, strong demand and uh, you know, uh, rent increasing. So once again, inside the commercial estate world, the you know the it's a quite complex world. And uh, as usual, no, there are winners and losers when there are this uh, you know this uh, this crisis or this volatility period.